forward with a new program under the Global Tiber Initiative, as Dr. Clough mentioned. With this agreement, the Smithsonian Institution and the World Bank Group are together pledging more than a million dollars over the next year to establish the Global Conservation and Development Network. The idea of this network is to try to link global knowledge centers and institutions in China, in India, Indonesia, Russia, Thailand, and other Tiger Range countries with globally significant centers of excellence in conservation science and critically, professional training. Our aim is to try to share information quickly and effectively about poaching, about illegal trade and trafficking, and in conservation activities. And the Smithsonian's National Zoo Conservation and Research Center in Virginia will serve as one of the initial launch pads for development of this global network. That's why I went out to Front Royal, and I can just see the seeds of something very, very important. Having worked in the field of economics and development for some decades, I've watched over my lifetime, what a difference it's made when you start to bring in people from all around the world that have the, some common sense of the issues, some common experience in the training, and that's one of the things that we're so delighted that the Smithsonian is offering to the world in terms of training and experience and getting together the ideas from people of all across different Tiger Range countries and how we can try to address this challenge. Our goal is to train hundreds of rangers and foresters and other habitat managers in Tiger Range countries on the leading edge practices in biodiversity management, with of course a specific focus on how to have more effective preservation and increase the wild tiger population. This won't work if it just comes out of Washington or North America or Europe. It has to be embedded in the Tiger Range countries. And the best ambassadors for that effort will be people from those countries that come to a project like this, see how they can be part of a larger network, strengthen their tools, strengthen their resources, and they'll be the ones that are most successful. And that's why we also have to expand our alliance to include other members, and that includes trying to secure additional financing. So we hope that this partnership and this program can serve as a cornerstone for the Global Tiger Initiative's efforts to prioritize actions, generate political will, and fundamentally, core point, change attitudes so that wild tigers can remain part of our future. Next year, 2010, will be the year of the tiger. So it's a fitting time to hold the first Global Tiger Summit, where we're going to try to bring together global leaders and partners in the ver various countries of the Global Tiger Initiative to try to discuss the commitments we've made, and we hope concrete and stronger and urgent actions on the ground. There's going to be some important meetings held in the next few months as a lead up to this summit to use it to drive action, hosted by the governments of Nepal and Thailand. Now, supporting tiger conservation is part of a greater global economic development challenge. In my office at the World Bank Group, I have a magnificent painting of a wild tiger that is painted by tribal artists who live in and around a national park in northern India. Now, some of these tigers have turned out to be multi-million dollar earners because quite literally they earn the equivalent of sporting stars or Bollywood actors. But more importantly, by doing so, they can provide the livelihoods for thousands of people, from force guards and wildlife guides to drivers, hoteliers, and artists. Because what the painting in my office reminds me each and every day, not only of these extraordinary cats, but it also showcases their value, alive rather than dead. It's an example of the economic benefits that can come from preserving a species in the wild and why it's so important that we remember that these animals are part of the national heritage of the countries. As Mahatma Gandhi once said, quote, the greatness of a nation and its moral progress can be judged by the way that its animals are treated. William Wilberforce, the indefatigable and ultimately successful campaigner against the global slave trade in the early 19th century, was also a leader of the movement against cruelty to animals. So as we look forward to the year of the tiger, I hope we can make 2010 the year that we finally turn the tide in favor of the wild tiger, the year when we can bring together local and regional and global action to reverse the decline in the wild tiger and help restore and stabilize what's a critical part of our heritage and biodiversity. But we can only do it together. So I want to thank each and every one of you for taking the time to come to be part of this and to spread the word about the commitment to this issue. 
So thank you very much, Dr. Clough, for the invitation. Thank you both. Um, I would like to get Keshav Varma to join me on the stage, and we're going to do the uh, signing of the MOUs. Thank you all. It is now my distinct and high honor to introduce to you the Honorable Madeline Bordayo, who represents Guam in the 111th, 111th Congress, where she serves on the House Natural Resources and Armed Service Committee. Congressman Bordayo is serving in her fourth term in Congress, and she has a distinguished 40-year career of public service, having served as in the executive and legislative branches of the Guam government, including two terms as Lieutenant Governor of Guam. And since arriving in the district in 2003, the Congresswoman has served on a number of caucuses and as Secretary of the Congressional Asian Pacific America Caucus, as well as Chair of the Healthcare Task Force. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Congresswoman Madeline Bordayo. <laughs> 